Now, for the central group, I sent SMSs. We need to get the refuge valves and our tantric valves. I'm sorry, refuge valves and bodhisattva valves and our tantric valves. And we need to write that. You have it, right? We can write that all out, excuse me. And we need to format it before ever, ever, I'm sorry, every Lama Chopo, before the ritual, we have to read that through out loud together. Do you know why? I noticed very sadly many people who practice tantra don't even know their vows. And some of them can very unashamedly use that as an excuse for doing things. I didn't know I had a vow. No, I don't have much guru devotion. Oh, I don't, I don't have much commitment. And they actually proudly say that to other people and use that as an excuse to validate what they didn't do or they should do. Jeez. Would you run around telling people, oh, I, I stole $20,000, you know, I hope I don't get caught. I don't think so. Why would you proudly announce to people uh, you don't know your vows? That shows how lame and lazy you are. Why, why would you tell people that I don't have faith in my guru? Why well, I don't have guru devotion? You know, you influence other people in a negative way. You send a negative message, you're a negative example, and you're a negative practitioner, and you're negative. Why would you want to do that? If you know you don't have it, do something about it. Do something about it. Very simple. I just read that in the Wheel of Time two nights ago. Why would you proudly pronounce all those things? You're not helping anyone. You're not assisting anyone. You're not inspiring anybody. You're not, you're not getting any message except negative to anyone. Why would you say that? And to new people, they'd be like, hey, you can do that, I can do that too. But you've been down for 15 years, 20 years, and you can, you can still be like that and you're still around. Oh, I can do that too. Wrong message. Because if someone's on diet pills and they go on TV and they weigh 5,000 kgs, wrong message. I've been on these diet pills for three months. Look at me. Suddenly, nobody buys those pills. Why do you think they never put fat, disgusting people like me in ads for gyms? Why do you think? Why do you think in, in my print career, I never get chosen for gyms? Because they say, save it. We want our gym to grow. I said, oh, that's true. I got asked once, but they canned me at the last moment. I was a diva. They didn't like it. Anyways, yes, and I thought, oh, so what's my point? Don't be a bad advertisement for the product. If you're spreading dharma, don't be a bad, bad advertising, walking, bad example. You're a loser, you don't read, you don't know anything, you always say, I don't know, you always late, you always forget, you always disappoint people. You are, you, you always don't do your work, you don't do your responsibilities. What are you? You are a bad walking example, a bad advertisement of your own product. Why do people want to come and learn dharma after they look at you? Why don't they want to buy something from one of our shops? Why would they want to join as volunteers? Why would they be inspired? Why doesn't the membership grow? Why is it you can't bring anybody to Dharma? Because you're a walking bad advertisement. Because you, you act and look and do the things the way you do, so when people take a look, they go, no thank you. What's the message you're sending out? So, you know, if you go to tuition class and you come out in your English, or you're, you go for tuition for French, you come out and you, you're worse than you started, no one's going to go to that tuition in class. You say, forget it. That sucks. I'm not going to that French school. You go to the cooking class and you come back and you're still making boiled eggs for everybody. Forget it. <laughs> I mean, think. And then you're in Dharma. You read Dharma. You've taken refuge. And you don't do anything. You're, forget about saving the planet and sentient beings and becoming a bodhisattva. You can't even finish an assignment that you're supposed to do. What kind of walking example are you for the Dharma? Oh God, would you just take it out and eat it for God's sakes? Take it out, come on, take it out. You're getting on everybody's nerves. Oh, can you get a crackly in the corner? <laughs> 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 Oh my god, go on, go on, go sleep, sleep, go on, go on, go on, sleep, sleep, good boy. Happy now? Are we finished? It's like background music. Did you get paid by someone to do that to me? 
My, it's total revenge, I'm telling you. It's revenge. Someone is getting me back. Okay, they win. Yeah. Are you, you have to ask yourself, am I a bad advertisement for the Dharma? Am I a bad advertisement for my guru? Definitely the guru will ask that of himself. Am I a bad advertisement? Yes, yes. All the answers come up. Tick, tick, tick. Yes. Anyway, I accept. Am I a bad advertisement for my family? Am I a bad advertisement for my country? Am I a bad advertisement for my race? Am I a bad advertisement for the people I want to attract? Am I a bad advertisement for anyone who wants to do anything good? If it comes out, yes, you know what to do. So you got to stop wishing for what you are not working on. So if you're working on it, don't wish for it. Why wish for something when you don't work on it? I go around killing a hundred people a year and I wish for Buddhahood. I don't think so. I don't think so. Andy rapes 100 women a year and he wants to talk about feminine rights. I don't think so. Do you think so? No. Juan waits at the Bangkok airport for any new suckers to come along and she jips you, rips you off, and steals everything you have, and then she, she, she's on a tourism board to talk about how safe Thailand is. Will you believe her? No, I don't think so. You don't hold your vows. You don't know any crap about Buddhism. You make main excuses. You have no guru devotion. You've been in Dharma for 20 years, 15, 10 years, whatever, it is, whatever decades have passed by from your life, and you still act as if you're new in Dharma. I don't think people can look at you and say, hey, I think I want to go to your temple. I don't think so. If you contradict your own teachers, if you fight, if you're disharmonious with each other, you can't be responsible with each other, how can you expect harmony from any part of your life? You gotta think, am I doing what I'm wishing for? Am I wishing what I'm wishing for? Am I doing to accomplish it? You have to think. That is Dharma. That is Buddhism. That is philosophy. That is the core of Dharma practice. Am I doing what I want? What I want to get, am I doing it? Or am I doing one, I'm not doing one thing about it, yet I keep wishing for it, and I'm depressed, and I belly it, and I complain to everybody about how I don't get it. Yet I'm not doing anything. How do you get it if you don't do it? I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm hungry, I'm fainting. I haven't eaten in days, and there's a buffet in front of you. Pay for it, help yourself. And you don't want to eat. I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. You want to get a fabulous relationship. You want to be with that one wonderful person that loves you, that treats you with care, and that respects you. That, that, but look at you. Do you have what it takes? Do you have what it takes to maintain and sustain and get what you want? If you don't, don't wish for it. Don't complain and don't keep looking in the wrong direction. You ain't going to get it. You ain't ever going to get it. Ever. Because you don't have what it takes to get it. And you know why you don't have? Not because you don't have, because you don't try. You don't make it up. You don't make an attempt and you don't accomplish and you don't go one step at a time. That's why. Very simple. You're not realistic with yourself and honest, actually. And you don't put the effort where it should be. Go. So don't wish for what you ain't ever going to get. You don't do practice, the preliminaries, you don't study, you don't do meditation, you don't do fulfill your commitments, you don't hold your vows. Don't wish for Buddhahood. Don't wish for it. You think a Buddha became a Buddha sitting around at the beach picking his nose, slapping lobsters down his throat, eating non-stop, listening to an iPod, not reading Dharma books, reading trashy trash magazines all day long? Do you think he became a Buddha by disappointing everybody around him? Do you think he, he became a Buddha by lying and making lame excuses and not pushing himself? Do you think he became a Buddha like that? I don't think so. So how do we expect, forget, forget any of us in this room being a Buddha in the next 60 aeons, alright? Just forget it. Just don't even think about that you're going to be a Buddha. Don't, don't even make lame little wishes, may I become a Buddha, I dedicate all this. Forget it! It's like pissing in the ocean and hoping every, every sea animal in there dies. One teeny little piss inside the ocean ain't going to kill nothing. 
not even an amoeba, it disperses immediately. So once you're lame there, become a Buddha and bend it all sentient, lame, 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 lame. It ain't gonna happen. Why? You can't even get a relationship that you want. Because you want to adjust yourself. You can't maintain a relationship that you're, you're dying for. And you go through all this drama, you read romance, and you, you, you go talk to people, you drown yourself at the pub, you forget yourself, you change your look, because you're hurt. Because you were dumped again. Why? Because you're driving the other person nuts with your irresponsibility and your lack of self-control. You can't make any money in business or whatever. Why? Guess why? Yeah, don't let me repeat the same crap. Yeah, yeah, I know it's my ego. Think. So, my message here is, stop wishing for what you can't get. And you know why you can't get it? Harmony from people, respect, love, tolerance, forgiveness, help. Because you don't want to change your mind towards that direction to get it in order to get it. And that is not criticism. That is examination for the mind. That is what I talked about just now is total meditation. Everything is meditation. Everything is to be recorded, listened to, and meditated. Stop it, meditate, stop meditating. That's how we do it. And you know what you get from meditation? When you meditate on it enough and think about it from all angles, then it becomes part of your mind. That's called a realization. And then, and then. All right, on a very basic fundamental level, when you stop doing what you were doing because of that realization, it is an attainment. You have attained. And that's how you move on from meditation. And attainment stems from realization. Realization stems from meditation. Meditation, in another word, is contemplation. On it from different angles. And contemplation comes from knowledge. Knowledge can come from books, your teacher, from oral transmission, from example. So that's why it's important to read and to listen to the Dharma as much as possible with a focused mind. From a focused mind of reading and listening to Dharma and asking questions, then you contemplate. Contemplation slash and or meditation. Daily, consistently, twice a week, consistently. Many side benefits from awareness and discipline, but the main thing is you have realization. From realization, what is realization? Again, I repeat, when you stop what you were doing that was harmful to yourself and others, when you stop completely, then that is called attainment. Attainment is Siddhi in Sanskrit. And a Mahasiddha is one with attainments, one with accomplishments. And those are basic fundamental attainments. If we choose. Everything that our teacher gives us is a meditation. And I'm not being dramatic. Everything. Because everything leads to destroying the causes for us to create further unhappiness and to continue our unhappiness. Everything. 